Hiya folks, it's Jocelyn and welcome back to Yogi With A Book. In real time, I just finished filming my first part of my anticipated releases video, and so now you are getting my second part. I'll link that video for you up above. In that one, I talk about 19 2019 releases that are underhyped and that I did not get to this year. For this one, we are going to switch gears a little bit and actually look forward. And so today I will be talking about 20 2020 releases that are all coming out from Latinx authors. If you've been on my channel for any amount of time, you might know that I am a Latinx booktuber and I feel very strongly about Latinx literature. I am all about representation for all people of all different walks of life. And being a Latinx person myself, that is the one that is closest to my heart. I help co-run the Latinx-a-thon every year, which is a readathon I've created with three of my very dear friends on booktube. And I'm also one of the co-hosts of Latinx Book Club, which is a Twitter run club. We read a different book every month. And I decided with just the amount of amazing literature coming out in 2020 that I needed to narrow my anticipated releases down. And so this video is going to be just Latinx ones. I might perhaps in the future do a different 2020 anticipated releases of non-Latinx authors. So let me know down below if that is something you're interested in hearing. But I figured I just know of so many amazing Latinx books coming out next year and I just really wanted to share them. This is not going to be an exhaustive list. This is not going to be the only place you will hear about Latinx books, but these are, I think, my 20 top most anticipated books. I only chose books that have actual release dates and I think all but maybe two have covers because I have been burned before. But there are a ton of books coming out next year by Latinx authors. I do implore you if you wanted to hear about more, especially if you like contemporary books or nonfiction, which I don't have much, if any, on this list, that you take a look at the Latinx 2020 releases that Adriana created. She is amazing and is another just very, very prominent Latinx reader on book Twitter. You can find her at Boricua Reads. I'll leave her link down below. But she started this amazing list and that is so far the most comprehensive one I've seen. And there are well over a hundred on that list. So again, I'm just going to give you my 20. But if you want any more information, please look at that Goodreads list. Okay. That's enough of a preamble. Let's get right onto these books. It's going to take me a while to get through them anyway, starting with the very first one to be released, and that is Dark and Deepest Red by Anna Marie Micklemore. This one comes out on January 14th from Firewall and Friends, and I cannot tell you how excited for another Anna Marie Micklemore book I am. I've read most of their work at this point. I still have not gotten through Blanca y Roja, but Dark and Deepest Red sounds so perfect for me. If you didn't know, Anna Marie McLemore is a queer, non-binary Latinx author, and they write some beautiful, lyrical, stunning books that are mostly magical realism. And this one, I think, is going to be their very first historical fiction one. And it's also going to be a retelling of The Red Shoes. I love the movie. I'm not as familiar with the original fairy tale, but I trust Anna Marie McLemore implicitly. I think this book is going to be stunning. I know it's going to be queer and it's going to be about like dancing and magic, assuming there's going to be a romance too. I just need to read this already. The next book is called A Mixture of Mischief by Anna Mediano, and this is the third book in her Love Sugar Magic middle grade series. I don't know if this is going to be the end of the series. I will be a little sad if it's over, but this is currently one of my favorite ongoing middle grade series. This follows a family of brujas cocineras, and there's some like Coco vibes. There is a lot of baking magic, which I always find, pun intended, sweet. But also the main character, Leo, is just so adorable and I love her energy so much. I can't get into the synopsis of this book, obviously, because it's the third in a series. But if you haven't read the first book already, it is called A Dash of Trouble. It's fantastic. I absolutely recommend it. And I will be reading A Mixture of Mischief as soon as I can get my hands on the audiobook. This one will be released on February 4th by Walden Pond Press. 
Then on February 11th is another old favorite. Silvia Moreno Garcia is coming out with her next book, which is called Untamed Shore. And this is actually her first thriller. This is once again set in Mexico, as many of Silvia Moreno Garcia's books are. It takes place in the late 70s, it looks like, in a seaside town where dead sharks keep washing ashore. I don't really want to know more about thrillers going in, and I absolutely don't need to know anything about a book by Silvia Moreno Garcia before I read it, because if you haven't heard, she's one of my faves. You should watch my full video I did on her. I'm gonna plug that one real quick because I have read all of her novels at this point, and this one I have an arc up, so I will be getting to this one very soon. On February 25th, we have the conclusion of the We Set the Dark on Fire duology, and this is called We Unleash the Merciless Storm by Taylor K. Mejia. Taylor K. Mejia's debut came out last year. Once again, it's called We Set the Dark on Fire. She is another queer author who wrote a beautiful own world mythology book in which two women who are married to the same man fall in love. There's some rebellion and I was super into their relationship, but I will not go any further than that. All you need to know is that this duology is finishing in February, so if you did want to pick up a new one, you should pick this up. It's one of my favorite sapphic relationships of the year, and I am both very excited and very sad to be seeing the last of Carmen and Danny. On March 20th, we actually have the very first and maybe only translated novel on this list, and that is The Road of Ice and Salt by Jose Luis Zarate, which is being translated by David Bowles. And this is a horror novella, and that is pretty much all I know about it. The summary of this is still not up on Goodreads, but I do remember that there was an Indiegogo for this, and I backed this, so I will be getting the ebook as soon as it drops. This apparently is written by a Mexican author who's decently well known, I guess, in his home country and has not been translated before into English. So this was a little bit of David Bowles and Silvia Moreno Garcia's joint initiative, I believe, to get him a bit of a wider release. What I'm getting from the cover is that this is going to be some sort of sea-based horror. Either way, horror books are generally things that I am interested in, especially if it's going to be written by a Latinx author, and if both David Bowles and Silvia Moreno Garcia are behind this. I just trust them a whole lot, and I'm very excited to get to this. Then coming out on April 7th is Into the Tall Tall Grass by L'Oreal Ryan. And this looks like it's a magical realist debut that might work for me and might not. Apparently everyone in Yolanda's family are called brujas. They all have these sort of magical gifts. And then one day Yolanda's grandma falls into an unexplained sleep. This is the part that scares me a little bit because grandparents falling ill is something that I am very touchy about right now. And it looks like Yolanda and her friend and her twin have to go on a sort of adventure to get something for her abuela in order to save her in some way. So I'm hoping that this is going to be a little bit more of a hopeful and light magical realism story. But healing magic and family do sound like a pretty great mixture for middle grade, so I am hoping that I love this one too. Also on April 7th is Ghost Squad by Clarabel Ortega, and I have been waiting for this for who knows how long now. This is a supernatural fantasy that takes place right before Halloween and is a little bit spooky with firefly spirits and ghosts. There's also the fattest cat. Her name is Chunk. And Clarabelle is just a wonderful person. I absolutely love them. I've met her in person. They're great. And I truly have been waiting for this debut for a very long time. I once again have an arc of this because I have truly been blessed this year. And I just cannot wait to get to meet Lucille and Sid and Chunk. I'm sure this is going to be the spooky middle grade book of my dreams. On April 28th, I have Incendiary by Zoraida Cordova, and this is a historical fantasy that is set in Andalusia, Spain. And while this does seem to be a little bit of a royal story, it's mostly about a thief working against the crown, and that is totally my jam. I actually don't know that much about the Spanish Inquisition, and it looks like Zoraida is taking a lot of inspiration of that time, also clearly because she has set this book in there, and it's the start of a series, so I'm very excited to see what she does. 
I have been mostly enjoying the Brooklyn Bruja series that she has, and so I'm very interested also to see the difference between when she writes urban fantasy and something that seems like it might be a little bit more epic in scale. Either way, I'm always down for more Latinx YA fantasy because it is truly one of the best things in my life right now. Then on May 5th, we have another stunning cover. This one is called Lovizona, which is another start of a series, and it is by Romina Garber, who also writes under the name Romina Russell. This is Own Voices Argentinian mythology based, very into that, and seems to be a fantasy which involves witches and werewolves, but also ice and a lot of talk about immigration. So I am very interested to see how that coupling comes together. I am very excited for what seems like a female werewolf story because I have not read that enough. And also in general, I do like the idea of taking on supernatural elements, but to have a more political twist on them. So yeah, I'm excited to see Manuela Azul find her way into the secret underground world of Miami where brujas and werewolves coexist because that sounds fantastic. Also on May 5th is Sal and Gabby Fix the Universe, which is the second book in the Sal and Gabby series by Carlos Hernandez. And this, I think, is going to be the end. I believe this is just a duology. I've talked extensively recently about Sal and Gabby Break the Universe. It is one of my favorite Cuban-American stories of this year, and I've really been dying to see how Sal and Gabby's story is going to be fixed up. So this is actually a sci-fi addition to this list. Sal Vidon has the power to break into other universes and take things out of them, and it has caused a little bit of havoc. For one thing, he keeps just leaving Calamitrons around. I also did get to hear one chapter of this recently because I went to a reading that Carlos Hernandez was doing and it is just as funny as I remember the first book being. So I'm just very excited to read more middle grade. I can't say that enough in this video apparently, but this is another end to a series. And if you haven't read Sal and Gabby Break the Universe yet, you can read it before May 5th and then go straight into Sal and Gabby Fix the Universe. On May 12th, I have yet another middle grade. And this one is The Total Eclipse of Nestor Lopez, which is by Adriana Cuevas. This book is another Cuban American book, but it's also going to be one of the very first books that I've read where the main character is also an army brat. So I don't mention this as much on my channel, but not only am I Cuban, I'm also an army brat, and this combination I have never seen before in literature. And I'm very excited to see how Adriana writes about it. I believe her spouse was in the military and her child is an army brat and she herself is Cuban. So I'm sure that the representation is going to be on point outside of that. It looks like Nestor can actually talk to animals and animals start disappearing in this town. And so he is investigating why that's happening. I'm excited to see what sort of magic comes out of this world. I have always wanted the power to talk to animals and truly it seems like the total eclipse of Nestor Lopez is everything I could have wanted as a child and so I am so excited that at the tender age of 28 I will be able to read this one for myself. I hope you have not got tired of me talking about middle grade because I have another couple coming up. Coming out on June 2nd we have yet another Zoraida Cordova book and this one is called The Way to Rio Luna. This seems like a very classic fairy tale story where our main character Danny has grown up on fairy tales and has grown up on the ideas of moving into different portal worlds. And it seems like his older sister Pili has gone missing and he is convinced that she is in one of these other portal worlds. When he's just about to give up his search for her, he finds a mysterious book in the library, which happens to have a map to Fairyland. This is quite possibly another very separate book from Nessar Lopez that has everything I could ever want out of a middle grade book. And I don't think Zoraida Cordova has ever written middle grade before, so I'm really excited to see how her writing translates to that age range. Either way, it sounds great. I love portal fantasies. And trying to save your sister, like, truly bringing tears to my eyes. Also on June 2nd, I have Thunder Run by Daniel Jose Older, which is the third book in the Dactyl Hill Squad series. So again, not gonna go too much into this, but Dactyl Hill Squad is yet another of my favorite 
current running middle grade series. This one is set in Civil War era New York City, or it starts in New York City and then they actually travel in the second book, so they'll probably still be traveling in the third. And we follow our main character Magdalise and her friends who are all orphan kids of color who all spend their time riding dinosaurs. And Magdalise can actually control them a little bit with her mind. I've done a full review actually on the very first Dactyl Hill Squad book, so I will leave that linked up above. But just know, I think Daniel Jose Older tackles the themes fabulously. I am excited to see where this book goes. I'm not sure if this is going to be the end of the series or not. But regardless, if Daniel Jose Older is writing something, I am there because this Cuban American author has my money forever. On June 9th, we have a very exciting debut, and this is called Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. This is an own voices, queer, Latinx, trans fantasy, which is a Dia de Muertos paranormal romance about Yadriel, who is a gay, trans brujo who accidentally summons the wrong ghost. Cemetery Boys sounds entirely up my alley. I am very much into more ghosts, more spirits, and a sweet queer romance, always. Then on June 30th, we are once again being blessed by my queen, Sylvia Moreno Garcia. She is also coming out with Mexican Gothic. This book I'm pretty sure is exactly what the title implies, and it is a gothic suspense novel set in Mexico in the 1950s. This one does seem to be a little bit more of her usual fare than Untamed Shore was. She has generally written other SFF things in the past, and it seems like this might be a little bit of a haunted mansion scenario, and I am very into it. I don't actually need to know more about Sylvia Moreno Garcia's work than I do, so I'm going to read this. On July 7th, we have the only strictly romance book on this list, and that is You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. I know that she writes quite a bit in the romance genre. I've been hearing her name for ages, and I know, for instance, Paola Mancera really enjoys her stuff, I'm pretty sure. However, this cover just totally grabbed me. I've slowly been reading more romance as the years have gone on, and this one is about two telenovela stars, and it sounds so cute. I did recently read another romance book that was between two actors who had to start kissing because of their roles and then started to fall in love, and so it's kind of like a fake dating trope, and that sounds really adorable. Plus, it'll be the height of summer, and that is the perfect time, if you ask me, to get into romance. So I'm really excited to finally read an Alexis Daria book, and You Had Me at Ola looks absolutely stunning. On August 4th, I have another Taylor K. Mejia book, and that is Paula Santiago and the River of Tears. This is the first book in the Paula Santiago series. Apparently, Paul will have to save her friend Emma from La Llorona and sort of visit the place of her nightmares. And I'm really excited to see what that means. I'm all about folkloric retellings, and I've already liked Taylor K. Mejia's books in the past, so I'm assuming that this middle grade is going to be exactly the thing I'm asking for. Also on August 4th, there's another debut, and this one is Sia Martinez and the Moonlit Beginning of Everything by Raquel Vasquez Gilliland. This is supposed to be a bit of a genre bender, which I'm always into, and seems like it's somewhere between a sci-fi and a contemporary, a little bit of folklore, but also aliens two ways, as in from outer space and also illegal aliens. Again, I am very into the idea of talking about immigration issues in different, especially genre settings. And it seems like Sia has been living without her mom in Arizona for a while because she was deported by ICE. And then one day, a spaceship comes down and her mom is on it. I am super excited to see what this means. It sounds like this could be a very profound and beautiful book as well. And I don't know what else to say about this YA except that it sounds fantastic. The final book I have for this list is one from authors that I have mentioned before, but it does not have a cover yet, which makes me infinitely sad. And this one is Meteor, and it is coming out from both Anna Marie McLemore and Taylor K. Mejia, which means I know that this book is going to be queer as fuck. There is still just a very small synopsis of this on Goodreads, so I'm going to read it to you. A story in which two friends, one made of stardust and one fighting to save her family's diner, 
take on their small town's 50th annual pageant and talent competition in the hopes that they can change their town's destiny and their own. Again, I've read both of these authors. This sounds like magical realism and a little bit of sweetness too. I am just very excited for this and it says it's coming out in September, so let's hope that we get our cover soon. But all right, that is going to be it for me today. I am sure these 20 books are more than enough for you to start with if you're looking to get into some Latinx literature next year. Let me know down below if I didn't mention your most anticipated Latinx book for next year. There are so many other ones I could have added to this list but I did want to keep it a little bit manageable. Hopefully this isn't the longest anticipated releases video of all time. But either way, I am so excited for next year to roll around and there are so many of these that I have arcs for that I need to get to and I'm really jonesing to as well. But that is going to be it for me today. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll be back with another video shortly. Bye.